Quick video for you guys today. It's the dead of winter here, so not much I can do on the pole barn and garage build right now. So I've been focusing on some product development and product improvements. I designed a 5032 aluminum case for my Bosford ECUs, and I also have been working on bringing back the M66 reverse lockout boards. Uh, so this is for any 94 through 04 P80s that are M66 swapped and using either the P1 or P2 shifter and want to enable the reverse lockout functionality. Well, since it's the winter, freezing cold here, and there's not much I can do in the barn, uh, I decided to spend some time improving my vol squirts a little bit more, kind of driving myself crazy trying to perfect these, but I think this is gonna be the last major improvement and something that's definitely really needed. So originally I had these 3D printed uh, PETG cases. I would print these myself and they're fine. Um, I mean, they're pretty durable. PETG doesn't have that high of a glass transition temperature. So I was a little bit worried about these warping or falling apart or the layers separating or just getting beaten banged up. Um, and ABS really doesn't have that much higher of a glass transition temperature. And the thing with 3D printing is you, you can see the layers, you can see all the Z wobble, you know, the tolerances aren't as tight as uh, something like laser cutting or, or CNC milling. And I don't know, I just figured if I, I, I wanna make these as professional as possible and I think a metal case is the way to go. So 3D print it was good, but I think it's time to upgrade and, and move on from these. So what I ended up doing is doing a tab and slot design, a 5032 aluminum uh, laser cut case that I designed in CAD. And basically you can see it's a four part case. You have these two side pieces, the back piece for all the IO and USB. And then you got this top cover. All the bolt holes are the same and all the uh, vac port uh, map sensor holes are all the same. It's basically a one-to-one -one replica of my previous 3D printed case. It's just a tab and slot design with 5032 aluminum instead of 3D printed PETG. And I think they came out great. I'm really happy with them. Um, basically this is just held together with friction right now. So you can see this portion of the case right here, this portion and this portion, when you screw these down, it'll actually clamp everything down. And you can see it's pretty hard to pull this case apart. Um, I think I'm gonna end up actually tack welding the insides anyway. This one, I just put a little bit of super glue in the corners to kind of hold it together. And then what I think I could do is just hit a tack weld, you know, here, here, and here, maybe just a couple tack welds just to hold it all together and then it'll kind of just go on like that but obviously it would go on with this uh removed but i'm really happy with how this came out i think it looks very professional it's going to be very durable and uh, you don't have to worry about any heat issues with this one and you know the stock motronic 4.4 the bottom case and the top half of the case were all metal so i figure why not you know mock that design because it's uh, a proven proven design over the years and these are connectors are obviously very high temperature rated as this is just a, a factory OEM part. But I think it looks really nice. I think it looks really professional. It definitely doesn't like, um, you know, I'm just happy with them. Um, it's, it's not, you know, it's 2.54 millimeter, uh, 5032 aluminum, hundred thousandths of an inch. And again, just all tabs and slots together. Um, I tried originally doing like a, a polycarbonate uh, plastic because this is a very uh, has a very high temperature range um, but the issue with this is this is CNC milled instead of laser cut and the tab and slot design just does not work on this at all um, and I tried you know using super glue and you see it just makes an absolute mess I thought this is going to be really cool to have like a, a see-through design you can see all the circuitry and you know all the LEDs and everything or whatever but it's just not worth it it wasn't going to work and uh I think this will be a lot more durable and a lot more professional, a lot more clean looking. The other cool thing is that the metal case actually does touch the USB shield. So on this design, uh, the USB shield is actually only grounded on the host side, not the remote side or not the uh, device side. Um, and that is per FTDI's recommendations and uh, approved designs. Um, basically, if you do connect your, your shield to the PCB's ground plane, your USB cable is gonna act as a giant antenna and could potentially just inject all the electromagnetic interference from the engine bay, things like the injectors, coils, VR sensors, all that stuff firing into the ground plate and the board and cause issues. So the case is floating, um, the full metal case is floating as well as the USB shield on this side. 
But the nice thing is all this, since it's all touching, is connected to the USB shield, but just on the host side. So it should help absorb any EMI uh, potentially interfering with the circuitry when the USB cable's uh, connected. So I did a bunch of uh, test driving around that. Everything seems to be working really well. And I'm really happy with this. Obviously, just gotta put those two screws in, but I think this is a really uh, clean design. I'm happy with it. It's metal. You know, never have to worry about warping. And uh, I think this is gonna be the best way going forward. So just want to show you guys what I've been up to and just trying to put the final touches on this ECU. I'm really trying to make it perfect and it's kind of driving me nuts. So I think after this, you know, I think this is it. It's time to sell these things. This is a product I designed a couple years ago that I want to start selling again. It's an M66 reverse lockout driver board. And basically it's compatible with any 94 through 04 P80 that has been M66 swapped. You can use either the P1 shifter from the C30s, S40s, uh, V50s, etc. And you can also use the P2 shifter from the S60R, like the Spaceball shifter. The P1 shifter is a little bit easier because it just has a two wire solenoid that you can hook this right up to and drive. And the P2 shifter is a little bit more involved. You just have to pop off the cover of its driver board and solder two wires directly to the solenoid. Um, but basically how this works is you have the board here, you have the pigtail, you give it a switch 12 volt, a ground, you give it a speed signal that comes from the cluster. So there's a speed signal that goes from the cluster to the ECU. Uh, pin A7 of the cluster and the signal is the same for all the 94 through 04 P80s and then you got the two wires uh, to drive the solenoid. Uh, but basically how this will work is whenever the speed signal is above 15 miles an hour it will lock out reverse so that way when you're shifting from fifth to sixth gear you can't accidentally put it in reverse uh, let the clutch out pop your transmission and then basically once you come back down to under 10 miles an hour, it'll disengage that lockout and allow you to go back into reverse. And this way you can't accidentally shift into reverse and harm anything, but it'll come with the board fully assembled, the pigtail to wire everything up. And uh, yeah, this one's going out to a customer in the US. Uh, I believe he has an M66 swapped uh, 850. And I also had one of these boards that has been uh, being run in Canada on a 2000 V70R laser that was M66 swapped with the uh, P1 shifter. And he's been using that for a couple of years and haven't had any issues. And I don't know, I just wanna bring these back. I have a whole bunch of these boards. I have the components. Um, all the software is done and developed and everything. And it's a fully, fully fledged uh, and working product that I can start selling. Cause I know a lot of people have the M66 swapped P80s and don't have that uh, reverse lockout functionality uh, working. So I'm going to go ahead and take this into my office real quick and I'll show you a quick little demo on how it works. I just put together a quick uh, mock-up scenario with an Arduino Uno and a potentiometer and to simulate the uh, uh, cluster speed and then a small light to simulate the solenoid turning on and off. All right, so here's my messy breadboard test. You can see I got this little potentiometer here to simulate wheel speed input. I got 12 volt ground, wheel speed, and the two pins going to the solenoid, which in this case is just a little 15 watt LED, or not LED, incandescent bulb. Um, so as you can see, I start turning this potentiometer. Eventually I get above 15 miles an hour and the light turns on. And then as you can see, if I turn it down a little bit, it doesn't turn off right away because basically it has a five mile an hour hysteresis um, so that way you go above 15 miles an hour it turns on then you actually have to drop below 10 miles an hour for it to turn off so you can see anywhere in this little range here it's not going to turn off so that way it's not constantly going on off on off on off when you're in that range close to uh, the cutoff and then you can see I got to go down and then there it turns off where I dropped under 10 miles an hour so you can see it's got quite a bit of range from where it turns on and turns off. So you can see I'm turning it quite a bit. It's not turning off because you might be within that 10 to 15 mile an hour range. So that way you can, you know, speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down, and not have it constantly being turned on and turned off. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have my customer test this a little bit, make sure 
the hysteresis is good for him. Make sure the the engage and disengage points are good, you know, especially like in, in traffic situations where you're bumper to bumper. You don't always want it turning on, turning off all the time. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see how things go from there. And we can adjust the firmware as needed and get these things up for sale. Because I know uh, a lot of people could probably benefit from this. And I think uh, a lot of people have been asking for this over the years. And I just never got around to fully finishing them up. But I'm pretty confident that they're uh, ready for sale now.